Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dee. So in today's video, I wanted to go over just a quick question as to why um, some people get misdiagnosed um, between rheumatoid arthritis and lupus. So there is a decent number of people, both in the adult and in the kid world, when they first get diagnosed, you know, it, they can, the rheumatologist can tell, okay, they got something autoimmune going on, but they're not quite sure yet if it's rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. So I went over already in another video on the real specifics on how they're similar and different. This one is just a real quick overview of it all. And so if you want the more detailed version of what's different and what's similar, I'm gonna put a card up here and I hope I'm pointing with the right finger this time. Okay, so one of the reasons that rheumatoid arthritis and lupus sometimes get uh, misdiagnosed with each other, like someone could have RA when they really have lupus or vice versa, is in the situations where they're, uh, the autoantibodies, like the ANA panel and the rheumatoid factor and things like that, come out normal. So if those come out normal, and they go and do some scans and find, oh, they have some autoimmune arthritis going on. Well, it doesn't tell which kind because arthritis is common in both of them. You know what I'm saying? So that is one of the reasons. Also, if you end up having the only uh, antibody that you have is rheumatoid factor, like me, when I first got diagnosed, the only thing that was positive was rheumatoid factor. And while the chance of it being is more towards rheumatoid arthritis, it's not a guarantee. There are plenty of people who have lupus who also have a high rheumatoid factor. Now, if you want more information on those two labs, I have a video on that as well. Uh, I'll put a card up for that too. But you know, it, unless you have something that's screaming one or the other, which doesn't always happen, like when you first start feeling symptoms and you first get a diagnosis, you know, sometimes they have to take a guess just so, I mean, so insurance will cover getting treatment, you know what I'm saying? And so that you can start getting some treatment because both are inflammatory arthritis. So the treatments would be similar between the two. I mentioned that in my other video that compares um, RA to lupus. The second reason why it is very common to get them mixed up is also because many people end up getting found out that they have these things in the early to moderate stages. And what I mean by that is for lupus, unless you have that bright butterfly rash or you have like kidney nephritis, which is basically when lupus is attacking your kidneys and you're in the hospital because you're feeling that sick. Um, unless one of those numbers is happening or unless your hands are deformed, which again, those are uh, tend to be more like later aggressive stages. Many of us, when we come in, we don't necessarily have that. So unless one of those numbers is going on with you when you first get diagnosed, it could still be either or because the early phases of lupus and rheumatoid arthritis look very, very similar. So if you don't have any autoantibodies that is specifically pointing to this and this, you don't have like, you know, for example, like some of the things that are specifically lupus or specifically rheumatoid arthritis, and it's very common to not, you know, um, it can be easy to be like, well, we don't know which one it is yet. And really it's just gonna take time. Um, and hopefully we don't get to that point. You know what I'm saying? And then the third reason is because both of these conditions are chronic. So you're usually not just dealing with this for like a week, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna be having, whether it's joint pain, joint swelling, rashes, um, extreme fatigue, you know, um, whatever you're feeling with these symptoms, many people end up having this for months. And I've heard years 
Uh, awareness is getting a lot better these days as far as um, general practitioners being more aware of autoimmune things and what they look like to get you referred over to rheumatology. That said, there's still, um, there's still room for improvement in that area. So a lot of times people deal with these symptoms for a long time. And, you know, even some of us in the medical community, like I'm a nurse, I didn't think autoimmune when I was having all of my symptoms. I honestly kept thinking I was pregnant. Uh, and so it took me talking to someone else who had an autoimmune condition to be like, you think it might be that? And then I went and did the research. So you know, these are symptoms that you're dealing with for a long time. And these symptoms, a lot of times they're so vague, you know what I'm saying? That they, it, it could be any one thing. And then that goes to my next reason why they can sometimes get misdiagnosed too. You know, depending on where you're at in your like staging of rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, the symptoms can come and go so so much that, you know, sometimes things look more like it's just like a one-time fluke. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, it's one of those, these are two conditions that sometimes it takes time to see the things that are specifically like, okay, this is for sure lupus or, oh, this is for sure rheumatoid arthritis. You know what I'm saying? So that about wraps that up. If you are in one of those situations where you're at that point where you and your doctor are trying to figure out if it's rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, I know this is way easier said than done, but try not to worry too much because both are autoimmune, both are inflammatory, both can be treated with similar medications. So it's not like there's going to have to be a huge shift um, so even if they're not sure which it is, you can still get treatment. You know what I'm saying? They can still tell, okay, is it getting more aggressive or is it less? You know, things like that. So just stick with the process. I, I know it's very overwhelming, but at the same time, you got this. There are plenty of people out there who have been in the same situation as you and some people who have both. I don't have both and I don't see how you guys do it because one is enough. But anyway, that's it for this video. I would love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments, share your stories, you know, if you're comfortable. And with that said, I will see you in the next video. Bye.